Are you ready for the most epic adventure ever? Get on board the Rocky Railway. No, just stay there. I'll be right back. Uh, just, you know, don't touch anything. What's going on? You look pretty steamed up. It looks like you're going off the rails. You're not helping. It's an engineer thing. You just wouldn't understand. Oh, yeah? Try me. I bet I can track along with you. Really, you have to stop the train jokes. <laughs> Wait, there's more. I'm listening. In fact, I'm all engineers. Uh, okay, so anyways, two people usually run a steam locomotive, the engineer and the fireman. A fireman? Like a guy with a big red truck and a Dalmatian? No, not that kind of fireman. A fireman is on a train. He's the person who shovels the coal into the furnace and make the water go and the boiler run and the train go. I'm tracking so far. <sighs> so there's a new fireman on the crew and he just never stops talking. Hey, Cam, what's your favorite color? Hey, mine's purple. Uh, wow, how old are you? Were, they, were you alive when they invented the train? Hey, you want to hear a train joke? What do you call a freight train carrying law bubble gum? A choo-choo train. Ha ha ha. Isn't that funny, Cam? Why aren't you laughing? You don't like me. Don't worry. I'll make you like me. Here's another joke. How about the train get to go good at his job? Because he was training. Get it? Ha ha. Training. Ha ha. Now, wait just a minute. You don't sound like you're being very nice to this new guy. In fact, you're being sort of mean by making fun of him. You just don't understand what it's like to be constantly interrupted while you're trying to work. Oh, I think I have a pretty good idea of what that's like. But Cam, loving others is such an important part of life. Even when it's hard to be a good friend, you can ask Jesus for his help. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. But what if... What if someone just won't stop talking? Well, Jesus' power helps us be good friends. You can pray about it. Ask Jesus for his strength and patience, and for eyes to see your new crew member the way that Jesus sees him. I mean, maybe this guy just needs a listening ear. Maybe he's lonely. Sometimes the people who annoy us the most are the ones that need our friendship the most. Well, we have a long haul ahead of us on the next journey. So I guess I'll get plenty of practice being a good friend. I'm gonna need Jesus' power. Will you pray for me like you just talked about? Of course. We're going to wrap up here and then I'll pray with you before you leave on your trip. Who knows? Maybe Jesus put this new guy on your crew so you can show Jesus' love in exactly the way he needs, like no one else. Me? A job only I can do? That's cool. I'm gonna finish getting our supplies together while you finish up and then let's pray. Welcome to our last day at Rocky Railway, where we're trusting Jesus to pull us through life's ups and downs. Let's sing Your Power Will Pull Us Through and celebrate. Your awesome voices will let everyone know that Sing and Play Express is beginning. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh.
so fun to have everyone riding the rails with us here at Rocky Railway. A long time ago, trains were the best way to take a long trip. When people started using trains in North America, they couldn't get all the way across the United States on one train. There was a train that covered one part of the country and a different train that covered the other side of the country. Finally, they made it so the tracks connected. It was such a big deal that they put a solid gold spike in the train track to seal the deal. Now the whole country was connected. This week, we're discovering how we are connected to Jesus's power. That makes me want to dance and celebrate. <laughs> okay. All week long, we've been celebrating Jesus's power and God's awesomeness by sharing our God sightings. God sightings are just evidence of God. We see him here at church, at school, at home, at the park, at the pool, everywhere. Think of a God sighting that you had outside of VBS. We can trust Jesus that his father, God, is at work all around us, everywhere we go. Don't forget to use your sidewalk chalk to draw a heart outside for your God sightings. This week, we've learned incredible truths from the Bible. On day one, we met Ramsey. This tough guy helps us remember Jesus' power helps us do hard things. On day two, we met Ava, a majestic bird who helps us remember Jesus' power gives us hope. On day three, we met Sierra. This lovely mountain lion helps us remember Jesus' power helps us be bold. Yesterday, we met Finn, a terrific trout. Finn helps us remember Jesus' power lets us live forever. Well, we have one more buddy to meet, and I'll let this friend introduce our Bible point. I heard everyone was steaming ahead with the last day of Rocky Railway. Glad you're here. I'm Lawrence Elk, not a moose, not a ram, but an excellent elk. Male elks are called bulls, and me and my bull buddies like to hang out way up in the Rocky Mountains. In the winter, we move down where we can find grass, but in the spring and summer, we head for the hills. It's important that we stick together with the herd. Some elk herds are as big as 400 friends. Although my antlers are big and strong, female elk or babies don't have these, and a hungry bear is hard to fight off. Speaking of these amazing antlers, they are pretty incredible if I do say so myself. Sometimes they come in handy when other herds get too close to mine, or I need to show another bull that I'm in charge. Yeah, sometimes we butt heads, even in our happy herd. But I try not to get too attached. Literally, they fall off every year and I grow a new set. How cool is that? God also gave me a unique power to help me communicate with the herd. <clears throat> That's called bugling. It's a little like roaring and whistling at the same time. It keeps my herd close together, where we can be safe. Our herd even has scouts, a few elk who stand watch while others graze. We have to look out for each other. Do you have friends who look out for you? Friends you like to call out to when you're sad or silly, happy or hurting? Or do you sometimes butt heads with your buddies? Maybe you need the power to forgive and love a friend when you're not getting along. You don't have to do that all by yourself. Jesus gives you his power to help be a good friend. Jesus gave this powerful command in the Bible. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. If you're butting heads with your buddies and not getting along, you can trust Jesus' power and follow his words. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus! When you 
see Lawrence Elk, you can remember that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Let's sing about Jesus' awesome power. Kids, I want you to take a minute and get some stuff and decorate your area like you're having a party. Okay, use whatever you've got. Scarves can be streamers, draped over chairs, aluminum foil can make a shiny decoration, and cereal boxes can represent gift boxes. All right, we'll wait. When I got here today to the train depot, I found out somebody had decorated it for a party. And I don't even know why. I don't even know if I'm invited to the party or if you're invited either. But as long as we're all here, we might as well stay. Today, we're discovering how Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus. Since we're all good friends, let's play a quick game. When I say go, one person will try to get past another person in a doorway or hallway. Have someone stand in the doorway. You can try squeezing your way around or crawling through their legs, whatever works to get you in. Now, person in the doorway, you scooch over and you try to keep them from getting past you. And after a minute, we'll come back.
Okay, we're back. So now I want you to tell about a time that you felt left out. How did it feel to be kept out in that game? Tell about a time you felt left out in real life. Today we're learning that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus. In our game, everyone was trying to get through either a doorway or a hallway. And Jesus' first followers, the first Christians, had sort of an inner circle. But they didn't try to keep anybody out. They invited everybody in. After Jesus died and came back to life, he went back to heaven. And his followers and friends told as many people as they could about Jesus. You heard a little bit about that with Peter and John's adventure. And then those people told people. And those people told people. Well, you get the picture. Pretty soon, lots of people believed in Jesus. Here's what it says in the Bible about those believers. Friends, open your Tracking with Jesus book to page 42 and 43. Looks like this. I'll wait. So I'm going to read to you from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So they're eating together, they're praising Jesus together, they're hanging out together, and they're sharing with each other. Jesus' power made those believers good friends. And they wanted everyone else to join them and become friends of Jesus, too. Let's celebrate what we've learned about Jesus and his power this week so we can tell other people about it. How would you describe what you heard and what you see in these pictures? Talk to your family for a few moments. You may have seen that I have some gift boxes here. And I want you to think about what might be in these boxes. In each box is a clue to remind you of one of this week's totally true Bible stories. See if you can figure out which story it's pointing to and what that story told us about Jesus's power. You'll have to think quickly. You'll only have a few seconds to look at each clue. Here's one. While you were looking at the clues, I found this piece of paper. It's an invitation to us and it says, Jesus wants to be friends with everyone and Jesus's power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus. Oh, I get it. This is a friendship party. We're here and Jesus is here too. Most good parties have decorations. Well, We've got the decorations, and we got our friends, and we've had good conversation, and we've got the music, too. Speaking of conversation, I want you to take some time to affirm somebody for some specific thing. The word affirming means to praise them or to thank them, okay? So um, maybe you've noticed someone is good, a good listener and good friends listen to one another. So now I want you to affirm someone. That means to thank them for a specific thing. Um, an example might be that someone has helped you at some point and good friends help each other. Or you've noticed that someone is a good listener. Friends listen to one another. So do that now. And while you're thinking, I'm gonna tell you about somebody I want to affirm. So I have an aunt and she lives in another country way far away and I can't be with her. 
But she's got some good friends, three of them to be exact. And one's name is Joan, another is Susan, and another one is Angus. And I've met them and they're very good friends because they check in on my aunt and they help her get things that she needs when she can't leave the house. They're very good friends. Your turn now. Grab a piece of paper and a pencil and write a short affirming note to someone in your house or neighborhood or a friend. And please say only the things that are positive and kind, which won't be hard because Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus. Hi, I'm Renee and I'm 10 years old. Hi, I'm Alina and I'm 11 years old. Renee and Alina are great friends and they live in the beautiful desert of Southern Arizona. They love to hang out and be silly together. Their friendship has grown after they both joined an arts ministry at their church. Um, Ansel's Manos is a creative art ministry. We do puppets, we do shows, we do skits and stuff like that. And Sus Manos is Spanish for In His Hands. It's an art ministry that uses performance to share the love of God. There is dancing, acting, and music. My favorite thing about performing is probably looking, like, um, at the end looking at, like, all the kids all smiling and laughing and liking it. Sometimes performances are serious, and sometimes they're fun and silly. Regardless of being silly or not, one thing is true. Being a part of Ansus Manos has brought the entire team closer together. This puppet ministry helped us become better friends. And it's not just like me and her. Like other people? A lot more. Basically the whole group. Our group, like before, like we were all friends, like we were chill, but now we're like, we're like really, really good friends and like we're always hanging out. We're always like laughing, making jokes. Jesus has used the ministry to bring the team together. This team of friends help each other to do the best they can to share God's love. My friends, like they help me not be nervous because like they were doing, they were doing it too and they were nervous, but at the same time they, they supported us. I was with my friends and I knew a lot of people in, from church. So was it that, that scary anymore? Serving Jesus together has helped Alina and Renee become great friends, but they both know who the best friend is, Jesus. He, he's like one of our like bestest friends ever. He is. <laughs> yeah. Renee and Alina know that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Jesus helps me make friends. Um, like God knows that I'm doing like this whole ministry for him. And so it just helped me like become better friends with people. So he helped me like be friends with a lot of people, but still like worship him and praise him. In the Bible, in the book of John chapter 15, verse 12, it says, love each other in the same way I have loved you. Jesus loved us all equally. So we should love everybody because as he says in the Bible, we're all brothers and sisters and love your enemies. Jesus' power helps us be good friends.
Welcome to Imagination Station. I really can't believe it's our last day together. I've had so much fun making discoveries with you this week. Today, we're discovering that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus. But before we dig into that, I get to ask you one last time. Did you bring your imagination today? Since it's our last day at Rocky Railway, we need tons of imagination. I was talking to my friend Lawrence Elk, and he told me something amazing. Did you know that an elk can weigh as much as 730 pounds? I said, Lawrence, how do you power up to carry all that weight up a mountain? And he told me he eats 20 pounds of vegetation every single day. Do you have any vegetation where you're at? In a moment, I'm gonna have you run to the nearest vegetation and touch it and then run back. It could be a house plant or a flower or even a bag of carrots. Hurry and come right back. Now that we have our imagination sprouting, let's find out today's question. How many toes do elk have on each leg? Do they have two toes or four toes? Think about your answer. Ready? Okay, time for the drum roll so I can reveal the amazing answer. And the answer is elk have four toes on each leg. Imagine that! It's our last day at Imagination Station, and today we're going to make power bands. Yay! Steam trains get their power from either wood or coal. So you can use wood beads, or coal beads on your power band, or you can use both. But we get our power from Jesus. Every day at Rocky Railway, we discovered something new about Jesus's amazing power. So you'll add one cross to your power band to help you remember Jesus's power in your life. I'll walk you through the simple steps. As you work, Remember that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus! Before you start, you'll need to find some tape and some kid-friendly scissors. And you may need a family member to lend a hand. In your kit, you'll have 10 beads. Some will be coal beads. Some will be wood beads. And you'll have one cross bead and an elastic band. The first step to making your power band is to tie a knot on one end of the string. Just like that. You're gonna put the band down and grab your tape. Tape the band down either to a table or the floor. This is gonna make it easier for you to string the beads. Next, thread your choice of beads onto the string, making sure to include at least one cross bead. You can do any pattern that you want.
Now, remove the tape and work with a partner to tie the strings around your wrist and knot it so it fits just right. I had a grown-up help me cut the ends off my band, so now it looks nice and neat. Every time you wear your power band, you can remember that Jesus has amazing power, and he uses that power to help us. And since we know that Jesus' power helps us be good friends, trust Jesus! You can be a good friend by giving a power band to a friend. That way, your friend can remember Jesus' power too. Every time you wear your power band, you can remember that Jesus has amazing power and he uses that power to help us. And since we know that Jesus' power helps us be good friends, trust Jesus. You can be a good friend by praying for someone every time you look at your bracelet. Well, believe it or not, we've come to the end of our time at Imagination Station. If you need a place to keep your power band, can put it inside of a baggie. And if you have the Try This at Home sticker, it will help you remember today's point. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us at Imagination Station here at Rocky Railway VBS, where we've learned that Jesus' power pulls us through. Trust Jesus. Well, it's our final Rocky wrap-up, and we are going to have some fun with some chemicals. Chemicals you probably have at home, so uh, don't sweat that. Hey, guess what? Before we do that, we need to sing. So here comes a song, and uh, sing it loud so your brothers and sisters will hear it know it's time to come together. Sing. Here we go. There's a spirit I cannot contain There's a spirit I cannot contain The same power that raised Jesus up from the grave The same spirit I cannot contain What?
my soul Your kingdom is my home And I don't walk alone Everywhere I go On this road high and low Where I go I go with you So I won't be afraid This my home collecting all the Bible verse critters. We've had uh, some great time with those. I just want to show you critter number five, Lawrence Elk. He's pretty cool. He's uh, a good friend and he's a leader. He can lead his herd all over the tundra. Lawrence Elk reminds us that Jesus's power helps us to be good friends. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. That's from John 15, 12. I'll say it again. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. John 15, 12. I hope you will uh, look that verse up and read the verses around it too. That's always a good thing to do with all of them. But he will go right on your carabiner and will complete the set. And I hope I'm right when I say that you can find these little characters online and you might even be able to find some games you can play with them as well. Lawrence Elk is the last one in the set. I'll be back with some chemicals. In fact, moms and dads, if you've got some vinegar and you've got some baking soda, you might go look for that right now. And uh, we'll do something here while we're waiting. Well, what's Mr. E doing today? Is he cooking? No, not cooking. I'd like to do a little science here. Hey, if you want to try this experiment uh, yourself, you're going to need some white vinegar. That stuff's really cheap. You can buy it at the grocery store. Also, while you're there, pick up some more baking soda or the one that's been in your refrigerator for a while because uh, your refrigerator might have smelled and you thought this would help. You know what? It'll work too. It's been in there a while and you don't want to get the fresh stuff for this little science experiment. And, of course, some kind of glass that you can uh, you can get a little dirty or a little grimy. I'm putting the whole thing inside this big wash tub because I don't want to make a big mess. You could do this experiment in the sink if you want. That's kind of fun. But it's really going to be about Jesus' love, believe it or not. Do you need vinegar and baking soda to have the love of Jesus? Nope. What you need is Jesus for that. But! For this experiment, yeah, you're going to need this stuff. Hey, tell you what, let's pretend for a second that this simple, basic little glass is one of those people you know from school or church or on your baseball team or somewhere that uh, is just kind of hard to get along with. They're not that person that uh, you want to go to with all your problems or the kind of person you want to invite over to hang out or all that kind of stuff. It's just, just that person that you see over there and they kind of around you a lot and you see them at school or at the park or different places and you think, yeah, that's not somebody I love very much. It's hard for me to love them. I want to love them because Jesus wants us to love people. Jesus wants us to just have a love for people that comes from him. But some people are harder to love than others. Let's just be honest, shall we? Well, let's put uh, a little bit of vinegar in that person just for the sake of the experiment. Oh, well, that's plenty. I got lots of vinegar in there, and then I've got uh, some baking soda. So let's say this vinegar and baking soda is kind of like uh, asking for Jesus to give you the strength, uh, the encouragement, the know-how, the power to love those people that are hard to love. All right, so I just poured a little bit of that baking soda. It's just powdery stuff. I poured it in a piece of napkin, and I'm going to just dump it right in. I wonder what's going to happen. Mm. Well, you might have seen this trick somewhere. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! 
Is this a volcano? It's a volcano of love. Suddenly, when Jesus' power is brought into the whole equation, we have an exciting moment. We suddenly can see people the way Jesus sees people, and we want to love them. And maybe we'll just overflow with love, so much that we'll want to tell them about Jesus, too, so that they can know him as we know him, and they will love as we love, and they'll go to heaven, and we can be with them forever. I think asking Jesus for a little help, loving others, is a pretty good idea. So don't forget what Lawrence Elk says. Lawrence Elk reminds us that Jesus' power helps us to be good friends. Love each other in the same way I have loved you, John 15. Well, that's the last verse we're going to have. And this has been our last Rocky wrap-up, and it's our last day of VBS. I sure hope you've had a good time. I hope you've learned some things, and I hope you enjoy uh, coming together at least on the computer or on the TV and uh, learning about Jesus and his love and all that he can do for us and all that he wants for us. That's so important, and so I'm glad you've come to be a part of this. And I think we're going to sing a song. And uh, that's going to end our online virtual VBS. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. Together.